Yesterday, we slightly touched the issue of industry involvement during the presentations given by the ministry and FinData rep representatives as they talked about building and funding ecosystems, as well as providing data access for research and product development purposes. Today, I'd like to turn the spotlight more heavily towards industry and try to illustrate the themes which are most important from an industry perspective and, and also try to describe how to collaborate or enter the discussions with industry. There will definitely be also some learning lessons for industry as well as the approaches taken by government are, someone, are somewhat different from those of industry and there are also issues which are commonly mutually misunderstood. So, um, uh, as Tia Maria said, my personal involvement in genomics is quite versatile. I'm a lawyer by training and, um, and I currently work for Health Tech Finland, which is a nonprofit industry association and part of the larger technology industries Finland TIFF. And through TIFF, we're also a member of Digital Europe. Health Tech Finland has 158 member companies ranging from startups to mid and large size companies. Um, we also represent the genome industry of Finland. The National Health Sector Growth Strategy, which you heard about yesterday, is strategically the cornerstone, the cornerstone of our daily work. And we're currently very happy with the recently published revision and roadmap of the strategy, which identifies the important role of industry for both healthcare and research. My um, involvement with the National Personalized Medicine Project began roughly um, about seven years ago as I was working as a lawyer at the Supervisory Authority for Welfare and Health and was responsible for the oversight and guidance of the Finnish biobanking field, first through collaboration and later as an employee of the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health. For three years, my role has been to give legal support to the government from the very first drafts of the National Genome Strategy to actually writing the future genome legislation and also pushing through the two very difficult rounds of public hearings of the Draft Genome Act, which um, based on, on the discussions of yesterday, um, some of you have already read. So already during those years, I was actively communicating with industry and trying to learn about the different and often conflicting approaches to genomics. Um, as a part of my work at the ministry, I had the opportunity to join the One Plus MG LC group in 2018, and since 2020, I was offered the possibility to lead Working Group 7, which aims to involve industry. The group currently has 17 nominated members from 13 signatory states, which is a very good start, but we're still actively looking to broaden the group of experts. So um, basically through these experiences, it's become clear to me that the role of industry is often viewed quite narrowly without fully understanding the important role it plays as a supporting act to both healthcare and research. Few understand that if you take industry out of the equations, you would not have, for example, the technical capabilities to make genomic data and other health data generated and stored in clinical IT systems available for developing new clinical processes or algorithms. Nor would you have meaningful and validated tools and equipment for clinicians to use in patient care. Building data lakes, standardizing, harmonizing data, co-development, and certified quality systems all usually require involvement of industry in some way or another. Correspondingly, for example, the Finnish FinGen project wouldn't have had the opportunity to go as deeply into the relevant research questions that they have without the support and funding of industry. So yes, industry involvement does require discussions relating to trust and transparency. Yes, there will be negotiations relating to the level of data access, IPR protection and authorship, but would a large scale genomics project such as FinGen be possible without industry? And the answer is no. So maybe 
my message to the audience today is that um, industry isn't only a data user, as, as quite often you hear mentioned, but it also provides tools, equipments for producing data, it gives technical support, provides services, can be a research partner, and also a funder. So the role of industry is multi-layered. So I also have a question for the audience today to consider, has your country or your organization identified all of these roles and explored what industry could offer? I think we all have a lot to do in this sense. In Finland, industry is actively collaborating with healthcare and the research field through, for example, the innovation ecosystems that were mentioned yesterday. The health tech industry in Finland is a highly export driven, driven sector, so especially in large companies up to 80 or 90% of the turno turnover comes from foreign exports, um, mainly to the US, other European countries and China, so the Finnish industry really has extensive international experience and expertise as well as highly qualified personnel. However, the domestic market is a very important reference market, and that's why it's so important that the government also supports the involvement of industry in the personalized medicine project. That said, involvement of industry in governmental or legislative working groups is very rare, and industry is represented mainly through industry association, as, as is in the OnePlus MG project also. And I think the reasoning for that was highlighted in Lisa Maria's presentation yesterday. So she said that public trust is a must and that the issues of genomics are highly societal and political and can't be left to be solved by the research or the commercial industry alone, um, however innovative the solutions may be. So this is true. However, um, genomic data can't be found, accessed, or used in an optimal way if legislation doesn't recognize the principles of an innovative data policy. And to have a future-driven innovative policy regime, industry definitely needs to be involved. So, industry perspectives to regulation of genomics derives from a very broad, deeply digital view of healthcare. It supports investing in a pan-European technical infra infrastructure to pool genomic data for research and healthcare purposes. Industry also invests in education and new skills and works in multidisciplinary teams. So these are very common interests. Industry supports development of a trusted EU legal framework for the responsible and ethical use of genomic data and at all costs hopes to avoid the fragmentation of regulation as regulation has become fragmented, which is why it's critically important to invest in common legal frameworks and not close up nationally and establish local solutions. The health tech and genomic industry is highly regulated through the European medical device and in vitro diagnostics regulation and aims to optimize the use of innovative technologies, bio, bio IT and AI technologies, and genetic tests based on clinical evidence and effectiveness. The European medical device regulation provides a basis for using trusted, secure, and the best innovative capabilities. And last, industry also supports the shift towards prevention, public-private partnerships, the use of approved standards, and facilitating interoperability and data integration. So as you can see, there are many common interests. The conflicts relate to localized solutions, which kind of prevent industry from using the best innovative capabilities. And this is one of the central points of debate with industry in Finland. Um, for example, during my work at the ministry, I had um, multiple discussions with cybersecurity experts and even the security um, and intelligence service authority to elaborate on the risks and benefits of a centralized data storage system. At the time, I was told that the benefits of a centralized data register from a security perspective would be that all available public resources could be focused on that one system and layers of protection could be added in a way that would not be possible if storage was decentralized in multiple locations, though backup copies should always be stored separately. 
So working with industry has made me understand that the same principles are applied in the commercial context as well when using cloud capacity. Industry is using the best technology at the very pulse of innovation and according to the rules of the GDPR, as well as court cases such as the Schrems II ruling to secure data processing. However, the activity is global, it's not local, and all resources are focused on building one globally secure and technically advanced system to serve all customers and data subjects around the world. Having to adapt to multiple local regulatory requirements basically means having to divide those resources into many pieces. My experience is that industry can and will adapt to any local legal solutions, but the economical effect can be substantial in an industry which is already highly export driven and may push industry support further away. Okay. So what we need to acknowledge together is that genomics is global and universal in nature. It can't be restricted into one place. We're all in a global foot race when it comes to attracting innovation. There are currently various genomic medicine initiatives established around the world, and they're all trying to weave industry, research, healthcare, and governments together. At the same time, genomics is also going through an AI revolution. Uh, genomics has witnessed a boom in, in companies which have stepped up to the global, global challenge and they are using digital tools to either work with traditional companies or to act as drivers in innovation. AI-driven technology is now expected to generate new products and services based on those tools. Attracting new activity in this area would most certainly require enabling innovative yet ethically robust policy making. Um, I think we're running out of time, but this is an example of policy making and industry involvement at both the national as well as European level. Finland's policy making in personalized medicine is based first on the health sector growth strategy, which is the result of active collaboration of three different ministries, and secondly on the genome strategy, which have together resulted and will result in sector specific legislation such as the Biobanking Act, Secondary Use Act, as well as the Future Genome Act. This legislation is also supported by general data protection legislation. At the same time, we're actively working on the OnePlus MG project and also have a substantial role in the wider European health data space work. The intensity of how industry is involved in the network of policy making and in the different ministries varies in different countries and projects. And I think what's become clear is that common European solutions will eventually impact the legislation at national levels also, which I think maybe is why much of the industry focused is centered on um, building these common European solutions through, through, for example, the health data space work. And this is especially due to the EU data policy, which aims, among other things, towards an attractive and dynamic data economy, invests in next generation tools and infrastructure for data processing, avoids centralized solutions and data localization, and instead gathers common and interoperable data spaces and aims to develop a common European cloud capacity. So I think involving industry at the national level helps governments to adapt their own innovation policy and to even lead the way in common European projects and collaborations. So it's sort of a two-way street. To close my presentation, I'll leave you with some themes, themes for thought when collaborating with industry. So industry doesn't generally try to consider all of the possible use cases for a given technology, but rather tends to generate solutions for specified envisioned use cases. Policy making works with the other way around, and it's specifically focused on use and people and what people do and creates legal and ethical conditions for that use. Policy and regulation can't be created around a specific technology as tech always moves faster than regulation. Legislation is often driven also by past exceptional events. For example, the chain of events of Snowden, Schrems II ruling, data breaches, the pandemic, and um, policy and legislation aim, aims to make existing, existing systems work or correct wrongs that have happened. Um, industry, on the other hand, is a bit more future focused. It imagines better systems, improves flaws in present systems. 
And like Tommy also said, industry is also accustomed to iterating. It's how products are developed, for example, artificial intelligence or al algorithms, um, which are both used in genomics. And these are areas where you can't get it right the first time, so industry needs to develop agile systems to deal with that fact. And regulation doesn't work that way. It takes years to pass new legislation. And after that, the issue doesn't get addressed again for a very long time. So um, it's critical to get regulation right because the effects of getting it wrong are long lasting. And that's why it's so important to have industry involved in the drafting process of new regulation. Uh, I already touched the issue of global versus national. Um, and maybe, you know, just to close up to say that there is no right answer. Uh, we work in very different time frames. 18 months is a maximum time to roll out a new product. And policymakers, on the other hand, tend to think in terms of multiple years to get a law or regulation in place, and then more years as case law builds up around it and everyone understands the interpretations of the given regulation. We both use the, the concept of trust, but differently. So industry tends to think of trust as technical controls on behavior and policymakers think of trust in a more holistic societal term. Trust in institutions, trust as the ability not to worry about adverse outcomes, consumer confidence, et cetera. So this dichotomy explains many of the difficulties of the conversations. So um, I think, um, we, we have many possibilities for active and positive discussions between governments and the industry if we just try to understand our different perspectives to the same questions. Thank you very much.